Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. With Monday off, a lot of folks enjoying a shortened week, though Memorial Day a weekend itself, Saturday and Sunday, was about the longest Memorial Day, Saturday and Sunday, I remember. Long, miserable, cold, and wet. I'm Jim Hutchinson with a New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine, feeling a little bit more chipper today than I did on Saturday and Sunday, and perhaps than I did in my report last week, if you saw that. But it looks like sunnier, dry conditions uh, are on the horizon, according to the midweek forecast, looking ahead towards Saturday and Sunday. Though the NOAA forecast itself um, does show some pretty good southwest winds, or uh, bits of southwest wind, primarily southwest winds, uh, through much of the region, uh, Thursday, Friday, through the weekend. Of course, we've got uh, some rain in our forecast regionally uh, for Thursday and Friday as well. But the southwest on Saturday morning in particular seems to mesh well with the tides that we have in the back bay, especially for those fishing in the Tuckerton, Little Egg, uh, Little Bay, Great Bay, and Absecon area for that double dose of uh, fishing tournaments out of there this weekend. Uh, of course, the southwest wind and that outgoing tide uh, for my local waters at, at the head of Tuckerton Creek, it's a little after 6 a.m., I guess, on Saturday, the high tide. So that southwest, um, just want to consider that as you're pushing along the sedges and sod banks this week and along the channel edges. But again, you do have a couple of tournaments to talk about in the Little Egg uh, area. Uh, you've got the Raging Raymond Fluke Tournament. That's based out of the American Legion there on Radio Road in Little Egg Harbor. The captain's meeting is Friday night and the proceeds from that cool little tournament on Saturday will go to benefit the Nemours Pediatric Facilities of New Jersey. Uh, you also have the eighth annual RFA Bass River Classic. That's the fluke tournament out of breezes on the Bass River. That contest supports the Recreational Fishing Alliance and the top prize, a $50,000 cash prize to the contestant, weighing in the biggest fish, the biggest fluke, over 11 and a half pounds, 11 and a half pounds or better. Both organizations have made both the registration and the weigh-ins for Saturday's tournaments uh, pretty amenable to being able to fish both tournaments, which is what my dad and my nephew Riley and I hope to accomplish on Saturday. Uh, I'm just hoping that we improve on our past performances in those tournaments. I especially hope to improve on my opening day fiasco. We'll see what happens. Uh, before getting the latest reports on weekend uh, action, uh, let's talk about tournaments uh, for a few, and let's talk about the big one, the Members Only Fisherman Magazine Tournament, the Dreamboat Fishing Challenge, a 255 Steiger and a 300 Yamaha. Uh, for an update, let's check in with my friend, Mike Caruso, publisher of the Fisherman Magazine. Okay, the race is on and we're in full gear now as the competition heats up with the incredible Steigercraft 255 center console boat and many other great prizes from our Dreamboat sponsors. If you're not familiar, the Dreamboat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman's season-long, region-wide, multi-species point-gathering fishing competition for active subscribers of the Fisherman Magazine only. Get all the details on who's eligible, how to enter a fish, the prize information, the official rules, uh, and to subscribe, go to thefisherman.com. Okay, so here's the latest updates uh, for standings as of today, June 2nd, for the 2021 Rainboat Fishing Challenge. Uh, in first place with 26 points, Joseph Yam, his largest fish is his third place 16.5 pound bluefish, but he's also entered uh, two second place fish, a porgy and a sea robin. In second place with 18 points, it's Andreas Brundler. In uh, third place with 15 points, it's Michael Briggs. And in fourth place, it's a previous Dreamboat Grand Prize winner, Dave Wiseman, with 11 points. Uh, the fish of the month for May is wheat fish, and the largest fish entered uh, this month was from Henry Piacentino, and it's a 7.58 pound fish caught on May 25th. Uh, it was weighed in at Chasing Tails Bait and Tackle. Henry wins a fish mount from Global Fish Mounts and uh, an accurate turn star drag reel. Uh, in other Dreamboat news, we're starting to see some very, very nice fluke entries. Uh, here's Casey. Uh, Marichek with a 10.65 pounder weighed in at River's End Tackle for the first place position. And we're also seeing some very large, big, yellow-eyed bluefish uh, entered. 
like this brute weighed in by Dean Paolella out of uh, Springfield, New Jersey at 18 pounds and 5 ounces. It's, uh, as of now, it is the first place bluefish uh, in the dream boat. Okay, so now let's dive into the drama of another contest of ours, the Fisherman's Coastal Kayak Clash Competition, which is sponsored by Hobie Kayaks. Uh, all fish in this contest must be caught uh, and entered by kayak anglers. Um, here are the standings as of today. We have a close race and the action is only going to get hotter. Uh, like the Dreamboat Challenge, subscribers can enter their catch for several inshore species. However, rather than a competition for the heaviest fish, the Coastal Kayak Clash is all about, uh, it's all based on the length of the fish. Okay, so here is the current top three standings positions. In first place, Justin Ulcer uh, with, uh, he has nine points and uh, he has uh, the top sea bass and second place sea robin and second place porgy to give him those nine points. In second place, Eric Lopez, he has eight points. Uh, and in third place, it's Robert Wagner with five points. Uh, get, in, get in on the action, uh, my fishermen friends. Uh, go to the website, learn how to enter and how to win. But remember, you have to be a subscriber. So get out there and good fishing to all. Now, Mike and the crew from the Fisherman Magazine will be going at it on Friday, the Manhattan Cup out of Jersey City. I'm not going to be fishing with those boys because I'm going to be on the Jersey Devil with the crew of Brian Rice, Paulie Walnuts, and my brother, Clark Harris. We're trying to retain our 2019 championship uh, cup uh, performance in the Manhattan Cup. We'll see how uh, well we do this year. It could be a little sporty on Friday. I told uh, Clark to come in from Cincinnati, make sure he's got his helis, but that northern coast fishing is still solid in terms of the jumbo striped bass. As a matter of fact, Captain Al Ristori, legendary angler, author, activist. He was one of the movers and shakers behind the Magnuson-Stevenson Act of, the, of 1976. But Al turned 85 years old this week, still fishes like he's a little kid. You know how he celebrated? With a 51 pound striped bass while fishing with Chuck Manny. So yeah, it's still happening. It's still happening across the board, out off of the Monmouth County beaches, uh, also inside Raritan Bay. Uh, the Maja Spoons are getting it done. The Mojos are getting it done. So is the live bait. And if you find those bunker schools, you can get in, into some plugging as well. Not just Monmouth County, Ocean County as well. In fact, the Eugenio brothers, Dave and Steve, also got it done on Monday after the Northeaster. Uh, they, were, they said they fished the rocks around Barnegat Inlet early Monday, uh, but I guess that Northeast wind really kind of messed things up in terms of the amount of cabbage. Uh, so they pushed it outside, headed north into 30 feet of water off Island Beach. This was Monday, dropped a couple of mojos, bang, caught and released this 48 inch striped bass. That was off of Island Beach State Park. So some jumbo stripers moving along that stretch, Ocean and Monmouth County as well. Well done, boys. No boat, no problem. Folks work in the suds uh, in the central coast, the northern coast, Ocean and Monmouth County, getting it done, scratching out a few good fish uh, in the beach, uh, along the beachfront, uh, clams, uh, bunker chunks. Some folks are still throwing some lures. Uh, we have them in South Jersey waters as well. In fact, Emmanuel Ohomang Jr. let me know he fished for the first time in his life uh, in Brigantine Beach, Memorial Day, said he waited all day, but finally paid off around 6 p.m., gave a special shout out to Andy at Riptide Bait and Tackle for the bait, for the supplies, and helping Emmanuel get hooked on surfing, uh, surf fishing. Monday, Memorial Day. Hoorah. Good to hear. Hey, listen, down into Cape May County, uh, I heard from Steve Granary. He let us know he was fishing aboard Ed's son this week with Philip Welsh and Nick Callio. Uh, they had six summer flounder, fluke if you will, to 22 inches and also a limit of sea bass. In fact, Steve said what the ticket was. He said, quote, thanks to the fishermen on giveaway for subscriptions of fish bites. I've become an ardent supporter of this product along with gold. That makes two of us. Good to see that. So the sea bass action continues. And again, fluking in those back bays is working out pretty well. In fact, our South Jersey field editor, Anthony Califano, in this week's report that goes into the uh, June edition, uh, he got word from the folks at Pier 47 Marina in Wildwood that flounder pounders, again, fluke if you're in the north, uh, they were having success on the intercoastal from Cape May up to Hereford. Minnows were working best, but Gulp got a strong second finish. They had uh, some fish reported out of Pier 47, fluke up to four, uh, 24 inches, along with weak fish, 16 to 18 inch 
Unicorns is what they're saying. Hey, if you're looking to score on some of these weak fish, uh, make sure you pick up the June edition of the Fisherman Magazine. That is out this week. Uh, we went to print on uh, Sunday night, but we're with Memorial Day holiday on Monday. Uh, we're going to be delayed by a day and getting it out to you. But Nick Konicheski has a great focus story on targeting, we call them unicorns, those weak fish, because the weak fish bite has been a lot better this year for those guys that are chasing them. Uh, but if you're looking for spots to focus on, uh, Nick goes into detail without burning too many spots from the Raritan all the way down to uh, Delaware Bay and also some of those uh, back bay locations. Also in that edition, uh, more information on fishing the cinder worm hatch, using the brood X cicadas to your advantage, uh, also tuna jigging, topwater stripers, skinny water fluke, and a lot more. Uh, if you're a subscriber, you should expect your home delivery probably Friday based on the uh, Memorial Day holiday, Thursday or Friday, but you can also find out uh, all the information and look for the uh, giant tuna uh, in your favorite newsstand tackle shop, Marina. Uh, of course, if you are a subscriber and you're getting that home delivery, you're already entered into the Dreamboat Challenge that Mike talked about before. You just have to enter a fish at this point. You could also qualify as a member of the Fisherman Magazine for a $500 cash bonus in the Black Drum Battle. Drum roll, right? First month of the battle is done. May is down. So I figured I was gonna wait until June to present. Who is in first place at this point? With a month left in the battle, Larry Casella, 74 pound drum that he caught. That was last week, registered that at hands to bait and tackle. We also got a slip uh, for our second place finisher right now, Luke Dombrowski, he's in second with a 57 pounder. That was also registered. Uh, with the folks at Hands to Bait and Tackle in Cape May. If you're telling me right now, geez, I caught a bigger drum than that, well, enter it, you gotta be in it. You're a fisherman subscriber, you're already entered into the black drum battle, but if you're weighing in that big boom or bringing in a Hands to Bait and Tackle or any of our other participating weigh stations and register that fish. If you're going uh, black drum fishing this weekend or in the next week or two, or you plan to do it in June, and you're not a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine, I'll let you in anyway. Go to blackdrumbattle.com to register for the tournament. You gotta register first before you weigh in your fish. But we have all the weigh details in there as well. All the dream, uh, the Dreambow weigh stations are there. The drum weigh stations, blackdrumbattle.com. Get all the details there. We've got an offshore report, a weekend tuna tournament to talk about that extends into next week. Also a quick rundown of what the head boats are doing at the Jersey Shore. But first, let's go inland. Check in with my friend George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, I say it all the time. What a difference a few days make with the weather and some really good fishing. I was out last week with Tim Keebler, and we were on a bite early. And I'll tell you what, the water was so low and so warm, that bite ended almost as soon as the sun came up. Now, I checked in with Tim again uh, after all these rains, and the bite was really on fire. I'll tell you what, the, the water was up, the temperatures were down, and fishing was good. As a matter of fact, Tim said he had nine fish on board before 7.30, in the morning. Now, that's a great start to the day. Now keeping on the river going up a little bit north towards the water gap, I checked in with uh, Tom Gilmore and he was out using some jerk baits and, uh, and, and plugs getting in some nice bass and even some monster perch up there on the Delaware near the water gap. But uh, fishing's good kind of all over. Uh, going back to the lakes up over here in Pennsylvania, uh, we had some great smallmouth fishing. I was out with Josh Taylor. We managed to get into a few really nice ones last week and even managed to get into a really nice striper. Now that, that, that weather over the weekend really turned a striper bite on here in the lakes as well. Guys were getting them here in Beltsville and also in up in like Wallen Pompack. I checked in with Will Grouper and he was getting some real beauties. He said there was nobody else in the lake. Nobody wanted to brave that weather but he was out there catching some beautiful striper as well. Uh, I think there's a lot of great fishing now guys. Uh, you know the, the, the season is here. Be sure you get out and get on them. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. Word from our local canyon runners, including the canyon runner, is that bluefin are in a little closer to home with Big Eye now appearing in our canyons uh, farther to the east and also to the south as well. But Captain Alan Lee of the Mution, he let me know this week, he said the bluefin are setting up on the inshore and mid-range lumps. He said, quote, this is Alan's quote, recent reports have been spectacular for trolling and popping bluefin. So that's good to hear. And we're not talking about those giants, but those perfect school size that you want to bring home to eat. 
So make sure you get in on that bluefin fishery. You do have the Beach Haven Marlin and Tuna Clubs Tuna Open. That's going on next week. Registration and captain's meeting is this Sunday at club headquarters in Beach Haven. And hopefully we're in for a stretch of particularly good weather uh, along the offshore grounds for next week as you guys go chasing after some of those big bluefin or especially those big eye. Uh, but for the weekend ahead, the midweek forecast from NOAA weather, uh, as far as the offshore grounds, we've got a cold front moving in through Thursday and Friday. Uh, so a little bit of choppiness, uh, very small windows. It looks like we might have a little window on Sunday, but make sure you keep an eye on that NOAA offshore forecast if you're heading out to the offshore grounds. A little nicer closer to home on the inshore grounds if you're looking to get out on the black sea bass. We've got black sea bass action going on right now from the reports we're getting. Monmouth, Ocean, Atlantic, and Cape May County, it's solid action. That goes down into Delaware as well. Um, but I know the folks are doing a good number on those humpbacks and doing it in quick fashion as well. I think the big mohawk out of Belmar limited out in a couple of hours earlier this week. Look at that knot head right there, some good size black sea bass as well if you're looking to weigh in in the dreamboat contest in fact if you're a fisherman subscriber and you're not on the dreamboat yet jump on one of the headboats get out there and get in on some of that black sea bass action captain ralph lair on the last lady there in neptune he said on tuesday quote the best bite of the season for us today on the black sea bass grounds we had our boat limit before 8 30 a.m so get your rods, Ben, hop on one of the party boats or one of the charter boats this weekend, load up on the sea bass before that regulatory window closes again on June 22nd. No, I'm not going to get started on NOAA regulations and have a meltdown this week, maybe next week. I will remind you, however, on two other important re uh, regulations to remember uh, while you're out and about this week. First, don't forget your saltwater registration. It's free in the state of New Jersey. It's also free in the state of New York. You got to get a license down in Delaware, but if you're in New Jersey and you're going saltwater fishing, you got to have that registration. Go to saltwaterregistry.nj.gov. Absolutely free, but you have to register. You're still going to get a fine. Also, no more snag and drop. A couple of people still ask me these questions if they're seeing these bunker schools uh, getting busted up by striped bass. You know, what am I supposed to do? Well, actually, you're supposed to, if you're snagging your bunker uh, on one outfit, bring that bunker back and relay it over to a circle hook. You're not allowed to snag and drop striped bass fishing. In fact, if you accidentally catch a striped bass on the snag rig, if you accidentally catch a striped bass on a J-hook, legally, you're supposed to release it. You got to use circle hooks. So again, you got to transfer those snagged bunker over to a uh, over to um, uh, a circle hook. Artificial lures are good. If you're throwing plugs, you don't need the circle. That's why a buddy of mine. Look at this smart Alec. Did he took one of my uh, took one of my old snatch rigs, put a blade on there and some feathers. He said, "Now it's an artificial." No, because once the bunker's on there, once that bunker is on, you got to go circle hook. So unless you can show me a snag rig with circle hooks on it, no, got to go circle hook. Um, if you do find those bunker schools getting marauded by uh, striped bass, also watch out for the sickle tails. Uh, Dennis Huber let me know he was out the middle of this week. He was looking for stripers spooning up off of uh, Mammoth Beach someplace or up off of Sandy Hook. Lost all the steel, uh, all that stainless on his spool, thresher sharks. So keep an eye out on that. Uh, hopefully we're getting into that time where we're going to start seeing that buster, uh, bunker busting bass action. Great time to throw pencils, uh, great time to throw swim shads. If you've already got liveies in the, in the live well, you're in good shape. But again, no snag and drop. Snag, re-rig, and redeploy. If you do find those bunker schools, be courteous. Don't crash through the mayhem. You'll sound the fish. You'll tick off the guys that are already working the school. Try to pick off those bass that are working around the edges. I did pick up a few tips from my good friend, Captain Erwin Heinrich of Scales and Tails out of the Highlands. I'll leave you with some advice on working those bunker schools. Catch them up. We'll talk to you again next week, right here at thefisherman.com. I like to watch, I like to look at the, uh, the bunker school, approach it from an uptide position. So if I'm gonna drift into them, I can without running into them. I use my electronics as I approach the school. I'm also watching the school, see what kind of shape it's in, what kind of movement I'm seeing on the bunker. And I'm using my electronics as I approach to see if the fish are actually in the school or just surrounding the school or on one side or the other. Work the top, the bottom, all the water column, various types of lures, 
uh, try to get those fish to bite. Yeah, I, if there's a couple of boats already on the school, I let those boats have it and find another school. Try to get off by yourself. It's always a little better to find, pick off your own fish as opposed to barging in on somebody else or just waiting your turn. Uh, the bunker and the bass can't take, they don't like that, the boat noise. And uh, there's always more than one school someplace. They're not far. If that the first one that you come upon is, is uh, crowded, go a little further or find another one. Steigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters. Serious English chew Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.